Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Sand Gamers, and welcome. So once again, we're taking a look at a beautiful ship from the Steam Workshop. Now, this is the Ganymed, hopefully I pronounced that right, class attack ship created by Dolan. Now, what I really like about this ship is not traditionally what I would go for. It's not a super round ship. It's very square, very blocky, and it's just got some really interesting ideas and detailed features around this thing that I really want to show you. So going over some of the basic features, we've got one massive torpedo cannon that's fired from the center. We've got two torpedo tubes each side, and they are all weapons that are created using welding machines. So you've got basically a repetitive sort of fire motion. And we've also got bombing bays that or underneath. So the first thing we're going to do is do a little bit of an exterior tour, talk about some of the detailing, and then we'll go inside and have a look. Now, first off, something that really attracted me to the front of this ship is how it's created this inner sort of capsule area itself. You can see how it's created the blocks back to back and he's stacked them in, and then it creates this sort of indent area. And inside this indent, he's created these sort of tanks that are probably like radars or dishes. You've got the various different sorts of antennas that stuck out at different lengths, really giving off that effect. And if we move around, let's go around the right side because the lighting's a little bit better on that side you can see how it's added a little bit of color to certain areas showing that maybe these are patchwork areas that have been repaired after battle and so on and then to create a little bit of depth to the actual design he's stuck in some of these half armor blocks at various intervals making it think that there's a machine or something behind there that requires it to be stuck out ever so slightly and that shadow casted by that gives it a little bit more detail now, what I really like about this area, since these are the torpedo fires, you'd imagine that you'd get extremely hot. So he's created this sort of venting look effect down the side just by slicing up the blocks and so on, and then rounding them off along the side. The design of this has really been thought out well, and I really like it. Just look how it flows into this second part here. So we've got a turret that's been put on that little extruding part there. Look how that part just wraps around there and creates more detail by making these cavities. So you can see that cavity there actually leads into a little bit of a window that you can see when we go inside so looping back up around we're at the first area of docking port so we've got a main docking port where a ship could dock or something supplies could be offloaded we've also got a connecting point at the side that just has this lovely purple glow so if we go a little bit further back you can see how that purple glow kind of affects it if it's in a darker area and not in direct sunlight like the other side for instance it gives off an even better of aura to the ship itself so going up around the top you can see how this extended armor piece wraps around the hull all the way along the top down the sides around the bottom and the bottom of the ship itself at the front is very interesting because it's got this like long extension piece that reminds me of some sort of backbone of the ship you can see how it's been spaced out here lots of gaps and areas in between here creating detail that i really do like i like to see on a lot of designs so as we come back a little bit further towards the rear now, this is where we start to get a lot more detail in the thrust department. So you can see, first off, how the original part of the design was flowing into this area, and then he's created a different sort of plane by breaking it up and sloping it down into here. And just little bits like this where they've broken down a few different shapes, added a little bit of lighting, just creates so much effect and depth of field into the design itself. More turrets, and then we work our way to the back piece. Now, the reason I really like this back piece is just how simple the engine bay has actually been created. So we'll have a look here. So we've actually got thrusters going back, forward, and reverse so it doesn't cluster up the side of the actual ship so you get a very clean design without thrusters sticking out of every hole and what's quite interesting about this ship this is one of the few ships that actually uses internally built thrusters so you can see we've got that cage around all them thrusters but at the same time we've got all directions covered as well so if we just actually pop in through the wall here this is the engine room for the reverse sort of thrust very nice, very simple, and you can see how it's been cut out and measured in such a way so these thrusters won't actually melt away, but at the same time, it keeps the design tidy and clean. Something I really like, I'd like to see on some more designs. Anyway, let's make our way inside. So something to bear in mind as we enter through this airlock into this ship, it is a real labyrinth. Attacking or having a fight aboard this ship would be extremely exciting because you wouldn't really know the direction. Everything's labelled, but if you're smart enough when you come under attack to take them off, this place is a right labyrinth. So if we actually spawn our character in here, we actually pop him down. Most of the doors are activated remotely, so if we go around here to the right, you'll see that we actually enter into one of the main corridors. So we've got escape pods, mass drive access and bombay access through here quite a nice little detailed interior some very stutch sort of steep steps going up and down into areas of course to save space so once again labeled so we've got the escape pods that way and the bombay access this way so i'll just quickly show you the bombays you can see that this door is actually locked off 
and meaning that it doesn't seal up behind you or open up when you walk past you actually have to manually access these quite an interesting little point so we go into the bomb bay everything everything is red down here so we've got the left and right bomb bays you can see that these are created quite simply by using a half cut block and then you can imagine as the bomb bays are created up there they're disconnected and drop down there so we'll have to give them a try momentarily once we get up to that area secondary bomb bay on that side and i'm not too sure what's actually in through this door here it looks like we've just got like a maybe a storage area oh the area below the reactor it actually is so let's go back into our spectator camera so we're back at the main airlock and we're just going to go to C Deck. Now, C Deck has all these monitors so we can observe various systems going on. We've also got buttons on here that allow us to open and close our blast protection doors, I believe. There we go. So, them doors can be sealed up without people shooting through our glass. We've also got access to C and B decks through here. So, let's actually go up to C and B decks. So, this is the upper area. And by going up through here and opening up this door as well. We come into this corridor where the main reactor shaft runs through, but we're going to go the opposite way of the main reactor shaft and go towards the front of the ship through the oxygen bays. You can see oxygen on both sides. These rooms just feel really like like they, they work. It's not super like crazy laid out in a way that just feels unfunctional. It feels like you could go to these different areas and access the things you need. So up ahead we have the cryo bay and med rooms. So the cryo bay is on the left. I quite particularly like the cryo bay room if we can get the door to open the first time. So you can see the little bit of lighting and that these bulbs have been created above each of the cryo bays, which creates this really nice ambient effect. Back into the corridor and on the other side we have a cut off door, so I guess this is just an extra storage room because it didn't open up as we went over to it. And we've also got the med bay on this side so you can quickly heal yourself up after a fire and there's an oxygen generator in that room as well. So let's go to the lower radar bay. Now the radar room is fully functional, so it'll give us a layout of different ships around us in this area. So you can understand here, or observe this from the bridge, but you can see there's actually a radar screen, and these sensors are spinning, so they will pick up anything that is around them sensors. So you can see at the moment in time, that little green dot is actually, I believe, I think it's me. Let me just double check, see if I move around the sensors. I could be wrong. Uh, we'll just check that out. No, it looks like it could technically be me, or be updating, but apparently that is where that ship is supposed to be in relevance to the area around it i could be wrong with that you know, you'll have to let me know in the comment section and below i've not used too much of the radar scripts themselves anyway let's pop back to our character on the main deck and get to the bridge so now we're in the area of the bridge so basically we've just been accessed back down the corridor the main one with all the monitors and layout we've got missile ports on both sides so the missile port on this side just takes us down to the actual bay where the missiles are created. Quite a simple little system, a bit of a navigation to get there with some steep staircases. And there we go, a little missile bay where we can create this using the projector script and build ourselves some missiles. So if we go back up that corridor, try to navigate this with the spectator camera, that can be a little bit disworldly. So let's just drop our character back in here, for instance. This door should open up. We should be able to navigate back through these staircases and we'll head into the bridge. Now, in my opinion, this bridge is absolutely spectacular. This is obviously a com uh, like a combination of uh, large and small ship blocks. So we've got layouts absolutely everywhere for everything. So if I sit in this chair, you can see everything. See the cargo mass, the power, our Pacific location laid out, damage to the ship areas. We've just got screens for everything. We can see everything fast and we can do it from all an interior sort of point of view. So let's actually pop out of that chair and have a look at some of the other monitors. So you can see the gyroscopes, different seats here. Sensor scan, uh, 28 meters friendly GPS character, human giving us all these really important layouts that we need. So we've got two buttons here. We've got attack mode and we've also, I think these are just empty wired up buttons. So let's actually activate the attack mode at the moment. Okay. So you can see the, actually that's unactivated the attack mode, we're already in attack mode. So with the attack mode turned off, you can see the windows actually open up and it gives us a view from the actual bridge. Something that you don't actually see in too many ships, just adding a little bit of feature like that so you can have a little bit of a view. But then at the same time, when you hit the attack mode button, the windows will seal up. So let's see if that red light goes lights go into red mode better for the eyesight windows go sealing up let's actually activate the cockpit and see how this thing handles right so now we're in the bridge we're gonna have a quick look at some of the weapon systems so the first thing we want to do is fire the missiles so we're just going to go into the tab and double check so this is open and close the missile doors on a timer so if we hit one we should see the missile doors on either side opening up i'll grab the spectator camera as well and whip that outside so we can have a little bit of a view so the missiles are actually opening up Let's see if these fire manually, or I'm going to actually have to access that. So it will hit two, 
And, oh, there we go. There's a missile prepped. And they're fired straight away. Going towards the target. Very nice. Did they continue firing? Let's have a look. So we've got like a second delay. As soon as they're created, it looks like a second wave are actually fired. So if we press cease fire, let's see what happens. So we press free. Now freeze activated a cease fire mode. Let's see if everything's still attached here. So do we have to press 2 again, I guess, to actually launch the missiles again? Let's have to quick check. So we hit 2. That should weld up the missiles, and it's taking its time. And then it should detach them from the timer block, and then send them out. Unless the timer block's gone a little bit crazy. Okay, there we go. It seems to have launched it, but it seems to be getting stuck, or some sort of glitch is occurring. So it's kind of like in and out, getting attached and reattached. So we'll put that on ceasefire for the minute. And I'm not going to close them doors just in case something goes crazy, like in Space Engineers, things tend to do. And we're just going to go back to the menu and check out the next tab. So we're on tab 2, tab 3. So what does tab 3 do? Let's read this. Oh, that's bomb bay doors. So let's actually start this one. So the bomb bays are underneath. So let's activate that with a 1. So this is going to open up the bomb bay doors below. And we should see some maybe templates being loaded. Once these bomb bays are working. Interesting. Okay. Bomb bays are open. Let's hit number two. Okay, so there's the bombs that have been created and they drop down like that straight away. Ooh, I like that. That's, re that's really cool. Just keep dropping bombs. So let's hit number three and that should stop the bombs from dropping. Let's see if that's worked. Yes, it has. Very nice. And we can close the bomb bay doors back up and it's turned off the projector as well so there's no mishaps. Right, let's go to the next menu and just have a quick look. So we'll go back to one. And we've got a few options on this. We've got mass mass engines. Let's have a quick look. So we've got fire mass drive on a timer uh, and mass drive door timer. So let's press 2 and see the mass drive fire up. Okay, so that's opened up, but it seems to have disappeared. I'm a bit worried about this. Okay, right, so the door's opened. Nothing's welded. Okay, on the side. I'm not too sure what we're expecting here. Maybe if I hit one on the timer. Okay, so this is the big cannon that's propelled by the actual mass drive itself. So let's fire another one of them. So it welds it up. Oh, God, it does all lighting effects as well. And it launches that apparently at like 248 meters a second. Something silly what I was reading on the actual article. So let's launch another one of them and see what it does with the lighting effects. Oh, that's cool, isn't it? <laughs> Just a standard war on the edge, but it's just an extra weapon that you can have in your arsenal. Now, the final test I want to do is I just want to try moving this ship to see how it handles. Okay, so we're getting a very slow acceleration. Turning left and right is not too bad. Let's do it. Give it put into a roll. Okay, it's handling quite well. Look at that. I love the sound of these ships as well. Okay, so we'll roll that back over into the direction of the sun to get some light on the left side for you. Okay, so acceleration of the ship is particularly slow. Let's check our deacceleration. So I reckon it's going to be quite slow because we've not got a large thruster pack, and it is. So if you do get this up to max speed, you're going to have to take into consideration your stopping distance as well. But definitely check out this ship on the workshop. It's a really beautiful, and it has some really interesting weapons aboard of it. Anyway, let's thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.